up, down. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Cardigan Boy. Today we're talking about moderation, which is the avoidance of excess or extremes, especially in one's behavior or political opinions. So, let's talk about that. So moderation, like most other things on this channel, relate directly back to perspective. The reason why perspective plays into moderation is because from your perspective, what may be normal is another person's extreme on the whole spectrum. So think of it like this. You've got more or less a thermometer, right? You've got the hots over here, you've got the colds over here, and you've got just right. But some people don't like what's just right for you. Some people like the temperature colder, some people like it hotter, some people like it anywhere in between, and some people like the absolute extremes, and that's where they dwell. Even if it's entirely inconvenient for them, they're gonna stick there because that's who they are. I'm sure all of you know those people that dwell on those extreme sides of those opinions, whether it's political or even just morally, they always push the extreme and they stick there. The reason why moderation is so important and why I'm bringing it up on this channel is because it plays directly into your happiness. It's easier to be happier when you have balance in life. You're going to generally have a healthier life, not unrelated to actual like health, like physical, but I mean your lifestyle is going to be healthier if you have balance. If it's too far skewed to one side, then you're losing so much in life that you could have otherwise. Something like school versus social life. Some people will put school over their friends any day because they need to get those good grades, they need to get into a good college, stuff like that. But they'll let it control their lives because they're not having enough moderation. Same with the other end where they'll put their social life over any schooling. They'll get bad grades as long as they get to spend time with their friends. You need to find the middle balance between that. Same thing with people that try to diet. Some people will try to force themselves into a diet of greens and salads and pure red meat protein and maybe some chicken, fruits, veggies. They're trying to be so healthy and they can't stick to it for more than two days because they're used to eating hamburgers. But it's the same thing. If you're eating too much junk food, you're not gonna be very healthy. This time I am talking about physical health. Again, you need to find the balance between indulging in good foods and eating healthily. What is anti-moderation? What are the things that fight directly against moderation and make it hard for you to live a balanced life? Addictive behavior, not just alcohol or drugs or anything like that. I'm talking about being addicted to anything. Some people are addicted to their phones. Some people are addicted to things like video games, chocolate, so many different things. All those can keep you from living in moderation in your life. They tip the scales of the balance and make it harder for you to stay on top of things. Another one that a lot of people struggle with is a lack of motivation. When you're not motivated to do anything, then you tend to be what a lot of people like to call lazy. That is correct, but it's misturned. When you have a lack of motivation, when it's just down in the gutter, your motivation is non-existent. You just can't have balance because you don't want to do anything really. You just want to lounge around. And sometimes that sounds so good, but it's not balanced. It's not moderated because you're going to spend so much time doing that that you don't do your chores. You don't go to work sometimes, go to school, get your homework done. You won't do any of those things. You won't do well in your life if you let your lack of motivation run you and control you. A very big one also is time management. Some people are really good at moderating at what they have in their life, but they're not good at moderating how much they put in. They'll say, okay, a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of that, but they have so much jammed in there that they actually don't have any time to release. And because of that, while they are trying to moderate, they're shoving too much in so that they don't have enough relaxation, which is also, in moderation, a good thing. 
bad examples of moderation are spending hours at a time looking at social media. Have I done this? Yes. Do I like to do it? No. That empty pit in your stomach, it just gets bigger and bigger, and then you realize you wasted four hours scrolling through memes on the Instagram explore page. Ah, procrastination. Haha, <laughs> love that stuff. That's another big one. Especially procrastinating things like homework. It happens commonly because you just don't really want to do it. But also procrastination is another big, big topic I'm going to get to in a future video. So I'm just going to hold that there. Future reference. Oh, this last one. This kills me. Okay, just talking about this hurts me on the inside because it's so common and people don't really acknowledge it because they think I'm entitled to my opinion. So they don't realize that their opinion might actually be a problem. I'm talking about people in society who have radical ideals. Basically a radical is anybody who is so aggressive in their political, social, or any type of change, basically. They believe their opinion is so right and they'll do anything and say anything to anyone to make other people think the same. If you go online and watch YouTube videos, there's so many of them, so many, like social experiments and stuff. There's a lot about radical feminists, radical racists, people like that. Radical feminists are the worst because feminist is supposed to be a good term. It's supposed to be labeled for someone who stands up for equal rights between men and women. But radical feminists are people who degrade men in order to say that women are better. That's not feminism, that's radicalism. That's extremism, not feminism. Moderation is so, 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 so important on this channel. The reason being, a lot of the things I say on this channel, other people will take to the extreme and they'll say, oh, he said this, which means this. N no, no, it didn't. Stop jumping to conclusions. I say these things because I want them to help make society better, or to help bring people happiness, or to make a change in the world. Don't take things wrong that I say on here, because I'm trying to say them for the betterment of other people. Don't jump to conclusions and put things in other people's mouths based on your perspective. Moderation, I guess, is just a fancy word for balance. Basically, you need to moderate everything in life. You even need to moderate thinking, like how, but you do. You need to moderate how much you think about certain things because sometimes you overthink things completely it's common or some people don't think enough actually you've met both sides probably people who completely overthink and will jump to conclusions and will try to drill through every problem with their thinking and they'll put so much on it that usually by the end they'll be somewhere that was completely different from where they actually needed to be and they should have just kept it simple the other side is somebody who doesn't think enough and usually they'll get themselves into a bad situation because they didn't try to think about the outcomes of their actions or the possibilities that would happen through this and that and that. You get it, right? Let's see who has some scales, right? Like the mm, scales of justice, those like cool looking ones. If you put too much on one side, what happens to the other side? It gets lifted up, right? It gets kind of ignored and it's just floating up there in the air. You can't touch it, you can't impact it at all. It's not part of your life. And then you'll dump more on that side, more on that side, more on that side, until this side lifts up. But now both sides are so heavy that even putting a little bit will just tip the scales completely. There's no stability in that. You need it light and moderated, which will lead into my next video, which is about simplifying. Moderation and simplifying go hand in hand. So you have to remember both while you practice both. It's kind of difficult. Juggling all these concepts I'm throwing at you isn't easy, but I'm sure you guys can get it. I believe in you. I believe in all of you. I really do. Moderation, nine times out of 10, applies to where you spend your time. It's almost time management, but on a broader scale. I'll get to like specific time management or an organization later on. In those nine times out of 10, where moderation is about time, Think about how long you're gonna be spending doing this, 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 and that. And then you have to find a way to balance those so that one doesn't take over the rest and pushes them away when the other three still need attention. You get what I mean, right? And then there's another alternate situation 
which I'm going to introduce next week about simplification. When you have to simplify a problem where you have four things, but really you only need to do two of them. This is moderation. It links directly with simplification. You gotta moderate and simplify. They go hand in hand. Remember that. If you like the music in this video, please check out Personic. Link in the description. He makes fantastic music. He's a friend of mine. Please support him. I would love if you do. And if you enjoyed these videos, please like, subscribe, share with your friends, spread the word. Remember, moderate, and I'll talk to y'all later.